Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you to enter the gates of heaven with thanksgiving and with praise, to come before you with singing. We exalt your name today. Truly, we honor you as the great and only King, King of kings, Lord of lords, your majesty. We say that you're a terrible God to our enemies. That you are high and lifted up and your train fills the temple, God. Oh, how we love your name. We love your deeds. We love your acts. We love your ways. Have your way in us today. This is our prayer. This is what we pray. As we come before you, we thank you, your Holy Spirit transforms us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for using me today as a vessel of clay. Use my mind, my mouth, my heart to minister the accuracy of our Father's ways. We'll be so careful to give him all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Clap your hands, everybody, while you're seated. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Uh, get your Bibles in your hand. I'm going to make this confession of faith. Um, I know we've been going without it, but I, I just feel the need for it today. All right. Lift that Bible up. Say it with me. This is my Bible. I am what my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. I have absolutely everything my Bible says I have. For I am a believer, not a doubter. For faith comes by hearing, and hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. So give our I Serve departments a great big applaud, will you? <laughs> Music team has been exceptional. Uh, all our team is exceptional, and we can't do what we do without you. Um, I'm going to uh, just set the pace. I know um, I'm going to say certain things today that's going to need some confessions of faith. I'm going to ask the rushes to be ready uh, once I finish to come and pray uh, prophetically over you and make confessions over you and with you. Um, we're talking about executing the warrant. What we mean by that is executing and releasing and practicing, putting into practice the release of the word of God into our situations. I wanted to speak about this, this world system, but I'm, I'm going to wait until halfway through the message to do that because our world is in trouble, but we're the answer to that trouble. And my wife so beautifully proclaimed, there's victory in our sound. When we look at scripture, we see that it was the sound of God that created all things. In the beginning, uh, he created the heavens and the earth. He created the heavens, two worlds he created. The heaven of heavens where he rules and the earth that he gave 
uh, authority and dominion to man to rule. But when he spoke, when he made the sound, his sound had substance in it. His sound had substance. When we make sounds, our substance should have, our sound should have substance. I want to read to you a prophetic word from Revelation 11, 15. And it says, the seventh angel sounded and there was great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Now, this is yet to come as a proclamation of the, the um, bringing together, the setting in order of the universe and how all the kingdoms of our world are now under the one government. The government of God, the government of Christ. In Genesis 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So in the beginning, he created both worlds, world that he ruled by uh, righteousness, authority, integrity. And he created man to rule in the earth realm by that same righteousness. The... God who created, the creator of it all, proclaimed the set order for his kingdom. He would rule over heaven, but he would give man rulership over the earth. Found in Psalms 115, 16, the heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has he given to the children of men. When there was one kingdom, one God and father of all who created all things, he taught his son Adam to rule after his likeness. He taught him that all things are upheld with the word of his power. He taught him that the entire universe is under a word system. That you will absolutely have what you say with your words. Scripture documents the law of words in Proverbs. It teaches us how to execute this warrant. It says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. A man's belly, meaning the quality of life, shall be satisfied with what's coming out of his mouth. We know out of the heart, the mouth Speak it. So what is coming out of your mouth, what you are saying with your lips frames the world that you presently live in. Are you confessing confusion over your life? Are you confessing paranoia over your life? Are you confessing your marriage won't make it through the storms of life? Are you saying you don't or you won't have enough at the end of the week? That you are less than and insignificant? Are you worried about tomorrow and anxiety has taken your mind and you are saying worry thoughts with your lips? We have to understand that our lives are the results of the increase of our lips. With the increase of his lips, this powerful principle that we increase in substance by what comes out of our mouths. That you enlarge your territory, your scope, your capacity with your words. The words that come out of your heart. This principle of speaking controls what you experience and how much of it you're going to experience in life. You set the limitations or you set the unlimited capacity wherewith you live under and you live by. The next verse is even more profound. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it 
shall eat the fruit thereof. My Jesus, that with our tongue, we're either speaking life to ourselves or we're speaking death to our environment and to our legacy. That with your mouth, you are using your tongue to execute the word against vile things that are attacking your legacy. That you are using your lips to proclaim the word of the Lord. That you use your mouth to put yourself in agreement with his will. Then he says, they that love using their lips shall eat the fruit of it. We have to think on this universal principle that by this word system, God created all things that we see and feel and touch. It came from an unseen arena. It came out of a spirit realm. It was spoken into existence. Then he says, those that love using their lips shall eat the fruit thereof. You will live by the fruit of your lip. With your lips you produce your limitations and your possibilities. Jesus even taught his disciples the law of words. In Mark eleven twenty two, 22, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Is there a mountain in your way? Is there an obstacle on your path that you cannot get around? He's given you the solution. He's saying to you that you're made in the image and likeness of your father. And that if you are made in his image and likeness, you should act like him. That when things get in your way, you're not moved by what you see, but only by what you believe. And if you believe his word and you believe you have the power of speech that you can speak to this uh, impossible object, this, uh, this, this, this uh, uh, um, challenging situation and tell it to be removed and it shall obey you. Those things which you speak, which you say, shall come to pass. You will have whatsoever. You it's the law. It's the law. You can't get around it. You can't speak on your feelings and get a different result. You, you can't fix uh, your mind on your contradictions and, and speak in paranoia and confusion and have a different result. This law of the universe, the law of words, it works whether you thinking it works or it doesn't. That's why God has given us his word that when we agree with his word, his word comes to pass in our life. He said in his word, let the weak say that I am strong. He didn't want us to call those things that are as though they will always be. He wanted us to call those things that are not as though they are. So he told us and has given us instruction. Let the weak then say that I am strong. Not focusing in on your present situation. Not falling to the indictment of the devil that says you'll never make it. Or you're insignificant. Or I got you now. Let the sick say that I am well. Let the poor say that I am rich. Absolutely agreeing with God's word for your life. 
For he said, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to give you an expected end. I don't know about you, but I believe it turns out the way that God has spoken over my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm anointed by God to do good for God. I'm anointed to live this life as an overcomer and not as a defeated foe. My wife got on to that sound that has victory in it. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. That's a, a, a persuaded mentality that God's word is truth. And I, uh, I will yield to that truth in my life. I will submit to that truth. And I will echo that truth in the earth. As it is in heaven, so let it be done in the earth. As God has proclaimed over my life out of heaven, I will proclaim it in the earth. Then he says, therefore I say unto you, what things of you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. Whosoever shall say unto, be this or be that, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So in the beginning, God's earthly son, whom he made prince and king over this earth, was taught to manage the earth with the words of his mouth. He taught him that whatever he called the animals, that would be the name thereof. Important lesson for us to know here. That whatever you call a thing, that is what it will be. Name promotes function, operation, and purpose. If you call yourself a failure, that is what your end will be. If you call yourself confused, that is what the end will be. Whatever you call it, that is what it will be. He taught him also to honor God, his father and creator. I've given you all things concerning life and godliness. I've given you all things I've created to enjoy. But I have reserved the tree in the midst of the garden. You cannot eat of it. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil has been for, forbidden for you to eat from. Thus the first and only commandment was given to Adam in the garden regarding the kingdom. So we have learned that in the beginning there were two worlds that were created but under one kingdom rule. The creation of God is under the keys of the kingdom of heaven while the heart of man is under the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God in men's heart. And when God made the heavens and made the earth, he intended for man to rule the earth with that integrity and with that righteousness. But then there was introduced an option to this one kingdom rule. Lucifer, a fallen angel, introduced alternative lifestyles. He presented options to Adam and Eve. Yea, hath God said, shall not eat, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So here is the narrative he is presenting. He's presenting an option to the one law 
that was given to rule over the world. Lucifer presents an accusation to them against God that he's holding something good back from them, becoming all they can be in their existence. So he introduces into their environment three things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The world has now received a new influence, an anti-God, anti-righteousness against justice and judgment, calling wrong right and right wrong. John, 1 John 2.15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this world. So since the encounter with Lucifer in the garden, the world has been under his influence and guidance even until this day. We are commanded not to love the world because its systems are driven by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And that is not the kingdom way. Our world is facing major changes. Even here in America, we are experiencing a, a shaking in the next several months. I need you to beware. There are extremes on both sides of the spectrum of our political parties. But we are not to be shaken by a political system. We are not worldly people. We are kingdom people. We do not trust in the world and its ways. We trust in God, his kingdom, and his ways. Jesus, while he was with us, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which uh, thou hast given me. For they are mine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in this world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. Jesus prays not for the world. He prays for those who believe on his name and are born again. Jesus prays for the Father to keep them whom he has given to him. He prays for them that they may be one as he and his Father are one. We are members of the body of Christ. We should not be divided by political rhetoric, by the right wing or the north wing. We should not be in conflict over their different projects and protocols. We should not be confused with their language of calling right wrong and wrong right. We've been called to kingdom citizenship. We're not of this world. In fact, he says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I kept. None was lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and, and, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Our pursuit is not after the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes or the pride of life. Not what the world can produce. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Hmm. Jesus continues his prayer concerning those who believe on him. That the world hates the believer that keeps the word of God. Even as they hated and persecuted the Lord, so do they hate his followers. Because I come to be at the right hand, I speak over them in the world that my joy, 
joy is in them. I have given them my word and the world hates them because they are not of this world. Because I am not of this world. We got to remember during this season of confusion who we belong to and who we serve. We got to remember that the polling place is not a place of conflict and not a place of, of, of fighting. I am not of the world. And this joy I have, this world did not give it to me. I do not find my happiness in this one being elected or that one being elected or this policy being passed. I get my joy out of the governments of God. A child is born to us. A son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders. I'm under the one rule of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He prayed that they should not be taken out of the world. That they should, he should keep them from the evils of this world. This is what you should be praying. Lord, keep me from these evils. What makes us different is the word of God. The word of truth. That we are sanctified. Separated to him by this truth. That we would set order in the things that are in disarray. Now, we're going to walk through some rough waters for several months. But after that period in that season. The church will experience revival. He says, neither pray for I, I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. And they all also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. One thing the world which is in darkness is looking for is the light. And we are that light. Jesus' prayer ministry will cover all those who would come to him based on the word preached in their generation. He articulates the necessity of oneness among us as the body of Christ here on earth. Our impact should convince the world of Christ who came, who died, who rose, and who's coming again. We are in the world, but we are not of this world. Our government comes out of heaven. That is why we're given the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That what we loose on earth has been loosed in heaven. And what we bind on earth has been bound in heaven because we're under this government. Hallelujah. 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 So my punishment is this. Not to be moved by what you see and hear in your media. What you hear and, hear and see on social media. That you're not struck with fear and paranoia and anxiety. Not knowing who's going to be elected and whose policies are going to be enacted. I need you as believers to come under the peace of the one who rules in righteousness and justice and judgment and equity. 
I need you not to lose sight of the supernatural. Depending on the sympathy of a government that gone awry. No matter who you choose to run that government, it has gone awry. Our sole focus should be on his kingdom. Our assignment is to bring his kingdom into the dark regions of this world. I'm going to ask the Russians to get those mics and get prepared to come forward. And they're going to pray over us and pray prophetically uh, with confessions of faith. Come and uh, get this. You can leave this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give, let's give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house. Come on, let's give God some glory. Come on, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Come on, begin to magnify the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voices. Hallelujah. Lift up your voices. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. What we heard right there was apostolic wisdom to give us and bring us into alignment for what is to come. I'm going to ask you that as we're getting ready to pray and make declarations in the house, to stand up on your feet, and let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost together as a corporate body. We're going to bring ourselves under the authority of the kingdom of God. Come on, let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come lift up your hands to the Father. Begin to lift up your voices. And begin to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Come on, begin to call on the kingdom. Come on. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, bring up some strength in the house. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, that Father God, we respond to you. And we thank you that, Father God, you are regulating our mind. We thank you that, Father, as we stand in this place, Father, we say that this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Father, we say that thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be established in the earth. Come on, the your voice, church. We thank you that, Father, as you are preparing us for what is to come, that we say that we are your church, we are your people, and we think that we shall be a light. Oh God, in darkness, we give you glory. Glory for that. We thank you that in this place, Father, we respond with yes. Come on, begin to tell the Lord yes. Come on, begin to tell the Lord yes. That in this season, the Lord said, I'm going to begin to bring you and give you vision for your destiny and vision for where you are to go and vision for new things, says the Lord. And he says, your response must be yes. Come on, say yes, yes, yes. Father, we say that in this place, we say yes to the kingdom. We say yes to the power of the kingdom. We say yes to the glory of the kingdom. We say, Father, we want your glory here that we want your glory in this place we thank you that father we shall rise up as a church we shall rise up as a people and we respond to that oh god in the name of jesus come on let's take a little higher we thank you that in the name of jesus we respond and we say father fortify us as a people fortify us as a people and we thank you that father we will walk in kingdom authority but we take back everything that the enemy tried to take from us and we say Arise and shine. Let your light has come. We thank you, that Father, that as the church we shall arise. I prophesy in this place that the Lord says, I am causing you to arise as a people. But you shall be a strong people, says the Lord. You shall be a strong people, says the Lord. Come on. Come on, rise up in that glory. We thank you, that Father, in this place, you're causing the glory of God to be may manifest in us. We thank you that, Father, the glory of God is in this place. And God, we ask you for glory. We ask you for power. We ask you for weight. We thank you for the weight of Jesus. Come on, say, let the glory come. Say, glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. 
Shibran si bobo da breki an seria Shariban do roson de re de haya For surely my glory shall be manifested And surely my glory shall be seen And surely my glory shall be demonstrated For I am the God of glory, glory, glory Glory, glory, glory Glory, 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 glory The Bible declares that uh, there are many that declare who would show us any good. And the prayer is, Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Out of your mouth, as apostle decreed, we're going to begin to release decrees now over your life, over your family, over your environment, over your community, over this city, and over this nation and the nations of the earth. We're facilitating this process of decree. So go ahead now here, we're gonna begin to release that decree. We're taking the limits off and so we're raising the volume in this moment. Come on and release decrees out of your own mouth. Father, we decree and declare the establishment of your kingdom in the earth. Come on, raise it. We decree and declare, Father, that the the light of your countenance is being raised upon your people. Come on, raise it. Father, we decree and declare that the atmosphere, the climate, the temperature is conducive for the move of God. We decree and declare the advancement of the kingdom of heaven in the earth. We decree and declare, Father, that we're moving as kingdom agents on assignment. We decree and declare that every limiting belief, the spirit of confusion, the spirit of uh, the demonic spirit of confusion that would cause chaos and wreak havoc and cause paranoia. We decree that the supernatural peace of God rules, reigns, and abides in us. We decree and declare sobriety in God's church. We decree and declare a sobriety coming to the people of God. We decree and declare that we are able to think under kingdom perspective. We decree and declare that we have the mind of Christ and therefore we think according to the truth found in the word of God. We decree and declare that our thoughts and our eyes are set as a flint. Come on and raise your decree. We decree and declare that even over the timeline of this year, we decree and declare Psalm 91 over each and every one of us. We decree and declare that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We decree that we are hidden under the refuge of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that no harm comes near our dwelling. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our lives, our families, our children, our schools, our jobs, our communities. We decree and apply the blood. In the name of Jesus, come on and release that decree. As Apostle was speaking, he was saying that there will be some times that will come that will be turbulent, but yet that we will see revival. We will see revival. And as the apostle was speaking, he was bringing us in regulation in our minds to be the church that responds to walk in revival. So as we've decreed for ourselves, let's begin to decree and declare that we shall see revival. Come on, uh, say we shall see the revival. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus uh, that, Father, we shall see revival. We thank you that, Father, we're not concerned about the left uh, and we're not concerned about the right, uh, but we stand and we decree uh, that the kingdom of God is demonstrated and we shall see a miracle awake to God. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, you're causing, oh God, righteousness to be established in our nation. And we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that our God is rising with power. Our God is sitting on the throne. And because God sits on the throne, we fear not. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that America is a nation set on fire. We decree and declare that we are a nation that responds to God. And we thank you that Father we shall see the power of God. We decree and declare that mantles are released in the house. We decree that we receive our destiny. And Father, as we speak of revival, we decree that you prepare our hearts to receive the harvest. We decree and declare that this house is a house of the harvest. We prophesy this is a house of the harvest. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the harvest is coming that the harvest is here that the harvest is here we decree and declare that we have the victory we decree and declare that we are a house on fire we decree that we are a revival house 
we decree and declare we are a city set on fire. We decree and declare that you expand our borders. We decree and declare that you call this to be a place that you have given us more than enough. If you receive that, come on, give God glory. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Come on, lift up your voices. 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 We decree and declare that we have the victory. We decree and declare we have the victory. 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 Come on, say. Come on, say we have. We have the victory. 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 As a church, as a nation, as a people, we have the victory. Come on. We decree it. We declare it. We decree it. Now shout unto God. Come on, shout unto God. the triumph in Christ Jesus. We have the victory. 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 Come on, we have the victory. We decree it. Sherebakato redianda for I sense in the spirit that there's heaviness in the house. I sense that there's heaviness in the house. And some of you have come here today and you have a heavy heart. We don't know why. There may be a bad diagnosis. There may be pain in your body. But because of the love of the Lord, he said that we have victory. I want you to look at two people and say, you have the victory. Come on. Tap two people and say, you have the victory. And begin to prophesy. Say, victory, victory, victory. Pastor Linda, open that up. And let's step in that, in that anointing. Come on. And say, I have the victory. Come on. Let us shock come in this place. Let's say that as a house, we have the victory. As a people, we are a strong people, and we have the victory. As a nation, we are a strong nation, and we have the victory. Everything that God has prophesied, everything God has decreed, we shall see what God has said. We shall see it. We have the victory. Come on, shout. Come on, come on, shout, shout, shout. We got the victory. Come on, shout. Come on, break loose. Praise and worship. Magnify it. was prophesying I began to see the victory banner waving even through the house the victory banner waving through the house and so we just release another shout and this shout as we release it we see that victory banner and not only do we see it but we see the enemy defeated right we see the enemy and the opposer defeated he is a defeated foe and so we pray because we have the victory through Jehovah our God. Come on and raise one more shout. This time we're signaling to all of heaven and to all of earth victory. that we are victorious. Victory. We are more than conquerors victory. through Christ victory. Jesus. Our enemy victory. is defeated. Victory. We are trampling victory. over victory. the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. Victory. Come on and raise victory. it. We God, we decree strength upon your people. Father, as we raise the victory. God, as we raise the shout and the decree of victory. Yeah. Father, as we seal our, and set our sights on victory, we decree new strength coming to your people. Master, we decree and declare that as we release the decree, Father, and as we release, God, the declaration, God, that new strength is being amplified. strength. May we decree with new strength. God, we thank you for 
see it, all right? So I'm going to give you a few first seconds just to give God a shout of praise and magnify him because you decreed it, you shall see it, whatever it is. If it's your healing, if it's your breakthrough, if it's your opportunity at your job, whatever it is, come on, take a few seconds to begin to give him some glory and shout because you have it. Come on, give him some praise in the place. Come on, come on, give him some praise in the place because Jehovah needs he's in the room. Jehovah needs he's just here. He's here. You got the victory. Come on. You got the victory. Come on. I got the victory. Come on, praise him. We got the victory. Come on. We got the victory. Come on, praise him. We got the victory. We got the victory. Come on, step into that place. Step into that new season. Step into that new opportunity. Step into the open door. Step into that new place. Come on. You got the victory. You got the victory. You got the victory. Come on, pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. As you lift up the sound, you're creating something in the atmosphere. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Come on, we got the victory. 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 Got the victory. Got the victory. We got the victory. Hallelujah. We're, we're staying here for a few moments, but we want to make sure that we make space for those that desire an opportunity. Yeah, an opportunity to stay in some overflow in this. If there are those of you that are desiring more ministry, the altar is open. There's a grace in the room, yeah? Our apostle has laid the framework for the days ahead. And so we're stepping into that word with alignment. But we believe that there's a grace in the room and so the altar is open. For those of you that desire prayer, those of you that want to be better prepared in the days ahead, and you know that that requires new alignment. It requires that you're engrafted in. Yeah, it, it requires a profession that Jesus Christ is Lord, we offer salvation. For those of you that desire new armor in the days ahead, and you know that that armor comes by way of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we offer that to you. And those of you that want to be connected to a house that's mobilized with language for the future, we say that the doors are open and so there are ministers that are ready to receive you. We also say the altar is open for ministry. And so we're flowing and we're tapping in because we believe that there was something that was released. And so we bless God for the anointing in the room. It's in the space. And so we release and we, we move in obedience with that. Uh, we, we decree blessing. We also decree uh, uh, overflow, rivers of overflow for those that are desiring to plant seed into the move of God. Those desiring again to plant seed into the next season and that naming of victory, that's also extended. So we're ending here. Service is officially dismissed, but know that the waters are troubled. 
And so we're sticking around and we're decreeing victory in Jesus' name. Amen.